Hi, welcome back to the garden. Today is Tuesday, August 30th. I want to talk about doing a little research in the garden. Sometimes it's as good to feed your mind as it is your stomach. That's another reason we're out here in the garden. We talk a lot about deep mulch and virtually weed free, but once in a while a weed gets in. Now I got a sneaking suspicion the two that we're going to look at today, I kind of know what they are, but it's always good to go to a source and make sure. All right, yes, I just had a birthday, so bear with me. Now, one of the things that are really prevalent here in northeast Oklahoma is what they call curly dock or dock. And this is also why I know they don't use any herbicides on the hay that I use in the deep mulch. That's curly dock seeds. But with the deep mulch, we do want to keep the ground covered. So if some of these seeds get into the garden, that'll be all right too. And if you compare the leaves, this is dock right here. It kind of snuck in. And the reason I left it is because it's got a really deep tap root. The leaf is oval and arrow shaped, dull green, hairless. Now you can eat curly dock, it is edible. But at this size, it's very bitter. The reason I left it is it has a really long tap root. And since we're trying to improve the soil, and we're trying to make it loose as far, deep as we can, the deeper the taproot, the better it is for the life in the soil. So having certain weeds in your garden is not a bad thing. Now here's a plant I've been meaning to talk about. It's a plantain, and it's all over the United States, and it's edible. And it grows in all kind of conditions. It's a perennial. You can tell these oval leaves and the veins go all the way from the base all the way up to the outside. They've got these nice little spiky seed pods. And these are edible, but just like with everything else, you get them seeding and these get tough. So they're not going to snap off real easy. So, yeah, you really don't want to eat those. But the leaves down, the tender shoots and the tender leaves. And these seed pods right here, those just snap right off. Sort of an asparagus taste. But the best part of these right here is if you get a bee sting or you get some kind of poisoning ivy or any other kind of, or a burn, and it says the edible parts, the leaves and the seeds, key medicinal uses. This plant has antioxidants, anti-inflammatory, antibiotic, anti-allergic properties. It's often used as a drawing plant for bites, stings, rashes. You take it, just kind of crush it up a little bit, get it kind of juicy and activated, and you can put that over whatever ails you with a little bit of wrapping, and you'll be amazed. Now, I'm not a doctor, and this isn't medical advice, but this is how our grandparents used this plant. Harvest the leaves at the base, remove the stems, and use like spinach. Leaves can be sauteed, stuffed, or added to pesto, Using a salad. Leaves can be eaten raw, but older leaves are bitter tasting. Seeds are edible raw, roasted, or ground into a meal. This will come back year after year, and it is a handy little plant. You could say it was invasive, but it's more like it's naturalized. I believe when they colonized the United States, they brought this over. And it just grows in just about any kind of climate and any kind of soil. But if you find one of these in your garden, don't pull it up. It's actually a pretty good little plant. So sometimes it pays to get out a book and obviously this is a forager's guide to wild foods and we're in the garden. Since we want to keep the ground covered and we don't have a plant here, this is a great substitute. And we're going to go ahead and keep this year after year as long as it wants to be here. Now if you've been visiting my garden for a while, we've known each other long enough, I'm going to ask you a personal question. Would you like to see more of the books that I do my research out of? Just leave a comment down below. Now I'd be more than happy to share some of my reading material with you and show you how I apply it to the deep mulch garden. There'll be some more information in the comment section below under the pinned comments. Here's another really nice example of curly dock. We're using that as ground cover. It's not hurting anything. And when we finish harvesting this area, I'll just cover it with a layer of mulch. I just picked these. And anything we can, anything we can use to help this soil, better. I mean, I just picked these. <laughs> you can do this too. It's not that hard. I want to thank you for stopping by. 
and taking a look at a couple, well, not weeds, but not something traditional that you would plant. I'm going to go ahead and pick these. You can do this too. And remember, until next time, take care of yourself, take care of your family, and God bless you. Come on, let's plant. Let's go plant garden. Since I don't have to do much weeding in the deep mulch garden, it gives me plenty of time to read. What I found helpful today is a forager's guide to wild foods. Help me identify a couple, well, I thought they were weeds. They're actually going to be beneficial plants. Now, I do most of my research from books I get off of Amazon. And you can do this too. It's as good to feed your mind as it is to feed your belly in the garden. And if you're into the new gadgets, check out these books on Kindle. I think it's well worth your time.